After Navy SEALs scrambled away with the body of the Al-Qaeda leader, they made a startling discovery. Sewn inside bin Laden's clothing was cash, 500 euros, and two phone numbers apparently intended to aid and escape. Now intelligence analysts are digging into those numbers, tracing previous calls to and from the phones, mapping out a network of terrorist communications. Who was talking to bin Laden? Who was he communicating with and directing? Uh, are there other links and phone numbers tied to those phone numbers? The bin Laden compound gave up more evidence than U.S. officials had ever expected. At least five computers, a dozen hard drives, and more than 100 computer disks were recovered. The SEALs also grabbed handwritten notes, weapons, and an assortment of personal items that could reveal key clues about other high-ranking Al-Qaeda leaders and potential plots. Sources say much of the material is encrypted and could take some time to decipher. The terror treasure is being protectively stored at the FBI's lab in Quantico, where forensics experts are analyzing fingerprints, DNA, and trace evidence. Meanwhile, a task force led by the CIA is digging through copies of the electronic files, looking for names, numbers, and possible locations of terror operatives. As we glean information from that material, we will make uh, appropriate decisions with regard to who might be added to the terrorist watch list, uh, the no-fly list, all those things. Officials hope the intelligence coup pressures al-Qaeda into making mistakes. If, for example, bin Laden's deputy and apparent successor Ayman al-Zawahiri decides to run, he could be more vulnerable. Now, there is a growing sense among counterterrorism officials here in Washington that core al-Qaeda is really on the ropes. And the hope now is the evidence hall may help the U.S. deal yet one more significant blow. Katie? Bob Orr, Bob, thanks.